Welcome back to the Sticky Art Channel. If you're new here, my name is Justin, and in this video, I'm going to show how to draw or paint on 3D objects and models using the new Procreate 5.2 update with just your finger. And previously on my channel, I already made a tutorial on how to do this with the Apple Pencil, but this tutorial is going to be a full tutorial on how to do it without a Apple Pencil and some tips and tricks and some of the things that I've learned along the way. That being said, if you do have an Apple Pencil, it makes this whole process of drawing and painting on 3D models a lot easier. The first thing you want to do is head on over to the App Store and download the most recent version of Procreate. And if you're not sure or if you have an older iPad, you can check on the bottom left. There's going to be an area that tells you if your iPad is compatible. So when you download the update, you will be prompted to download the model pack. And if you did accidentally hit next, you can always go to the help and then what's new and re-download the model pack. You can also download the model pack as many times as you want, but each time it's going to download all, I think, seven or eight models. Once the model is downloaded, you can select the model that you want to draw on just by tapping on it like you would a normal canvas. You can zoom in and zoom out of the object using two fingers or around the object using one. And if I pick a color and then a brush and try and paint on it, all it does is move the object around. No matter what I do, there's the color picker. But when you download this update, it is kind of set up for use with an Apple Pencil. So you will need to go into the Preferences, then Gesture Controls. And then on the bottom, you'll see Enable 3D Painting with Finger. And then Done. And now you should be able to actually tap on the object and draw on it. If you don't tap on it, it won't let you draw on it, but go ahead and tap. It should highlight blue, and then you can actually draw directly on the object. You're able to change the color and brush and all the other options, just like you can in normal Procreate. If you don't have a pencil, you will not be able to use the pressure sensitive brushes, at least to the full capability with the pressure sensitivity on. To zoom in and out, you can use two fingers in a pinching or squeeze motion. To rotate or move around the object, you're going to take one finger and press the rounded square on the slider bar. And then with the other finger, you can pan around. Once you let your finger off the rounded square, as long as you have a part of the object selected, you can go back to drawing on it. And it does take a little bit of getting used to, but you can definitely toggle between the two. One thing that I have not been able to do is the paint drop on a lot of the objects. That are textured. So one way that I have gotten around this is I drew a little bit on there and this is just for reference to kind of see where I drew. Then I went into the settings in the 3D and show 2D texture and this is an unwrapped texture, kind of flat texture page and you can see where I drew and then I drew a little bit more on it but what I ended up doing to change the whole color of this whole layer is I used a bigger brush and I just colored the whole thing in and going back into the layer, you can see that whole part of the object is colored in one color. And going back into that one flat sheet, you can now take a color and actually change it pretty easily if I want to just drop a whole color or a different color on there. The other way that works for the wheel to fill in big colors is just using a big brush, and you can also use the same method in the 3D. The only thing is when you do this, it can spill over to other parts of the object as long as it's visible on the screen. And if it's not on the screen or visible at the time, it doesn't color it in. And any of the brushes where you can make a circle, press and hold, and it makes a perfect circle, you can still do that. But one thing to keep in mind, since this is a 3D object, you wanna be looking at the object directly on. And if you're not sure that you are, the easiest way to do that is to zoom out a little bit and Procreate will automatically do that. But if you accidentally are somewhat at an angle and you make the perfect circles, when you do zoom out, you will see that the actual shape of the drawing that you have done is a little bit off. So to fix that, the best way is to just look directly at the object or zoom out so it kind of fix the angle, and then you can make your perfect circle and base your placement off of that angle. Another really cool feature that was part of the update are going to be the materials that were added to the brush library. So on 3D objects, you can select the object just like you would in drawing on it, but select materials. And I'm using Wattlebird, but what this does is it actually allows you to play with the texture as well as the object's reflective properties. And you can also change the opacity, but I'm using this Wattlebird and it is pretty reflective and shiny. It's almost like a high gloss paint.
Next I use the material Avalon on the base of the roller skate. And this material is super reflective, it's almost like a shiny anodized metal. And depending on the model that you use, some of the models are going to be separate pieces for everything, but this one on the base of it is going to be combined with some of the other parts. So I had to go around and be really careful with all the parts and only get the parts that I wanted to be the metal material. And in some places I had to come back and actually change the color back to what they were or the material as well. So on this part, I actually came back in some areas and had to change the colors of the bushings or the little rubber pieces. I found the best way to get the small details was just to zoom in as much as I could and then come in with a smaller brush. One feature that is not available, at least at the time I'm making this video, is inserting text on the 3D objects. So I went ahead and just wrote my name on the wheel. And if for some reason any of the Procreate developers are watching this, if you want to add a insert text feature or even a text wrapping feature as a future update, I think that'd be a really nice addition to the app. And now that I'm happy with the overall design, I'm going to go ahead and view it in AR or augmented reality. Go into the settings, 3D, and then view in AR. Might take a second for it to render. Once the object loads in the environment, you're able to move it around using one finger or zoom in and zoom out using two fingers and then rotate it using the two fingers and kind of moving them opposite. But I think this feature is really cool and it's a cool way to kind of zoom in and look at all the details up close. You can also pick up the iPad and kind of go around the object as if it were in the environment. And I think it does a pretty good job of actively doing some shading as well, which is pretty impressive considering it does it all in real time. One last feature that I wanted to show how to use just because I already had a few other people ask how to insert an image onto the object in my last video. But the way that you can do that is just go to the settings, insert photo, and then you can place it on the object that you have selected. And once you have it placed, you can actually go ahead and draw on top of it if you need to. But I'm just going to go ahead and place this here. And there you go. I hope this video was helpful. If you do have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up as well as make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for when I post my newest videos. And until next time, peace.